is up YouTube and welcome back to Bike Hub Japan so recently I did a video on what is life in Japan really like and I realized after watching it after playing it back to myself that it was, I was actually quite negative and said a lot of stuff that wasn't particularly <laughs> nice about the country and that's not really my um, my entire view so I wanted to spend a bit of time today to talk about the things that I love or the things that I like about Japan so I was going to do a top five, but I've got so many things that I do like, so I'm just going to shout them off and there's not going to be a one to five or anything like that. But um, yeah, let's, without further ado, let's get on with it. Alright, so first thing on my list is the weather. Now, if you guys noticed right now, let me pull that cover back, I'm wearing my summer jacket and it's February. So yeah, go figure, about a week ago it was minus one degrees and it was pretty cold yesterday too and then all of a sudden like someone flicked a switch, it is 20 degrees today. So the weather here is fantastic and I love it. There's very, um, the seasons are very obvious. You can tell when it's changing from summer, uh, from spring to summer, you can tell when it's changing from summer to autumn. They're very pronounced and obvious. So I love that about this place. Uh, the funny thing that you'll notice as well is the drinks machines change, right? Right now all the drinks machines are selling hot coffee and hot corn soup and hot tea and stuff like that. But I guess when it is officially spring they will all change the cold drinks and it'll be very hard to get yourself a hot drink. So that, that's quite, kind of funny, kind of little side story to it. But uh, yeah, for me the weather here is awesome. The fact that you can go skiing in the winter, you can go swimming in rivers or in the ocean in the summer. The fact that you can ride a bike pretty much 365 degrees, uh, 365 degrees, 365 days a year, obviously depending on what part of Japan you live in. You couldn't do that if you lived at the top of Mount Fuji obviously, but where I live I can ride every day without any problems and I don't even particularly get really, really cold. So yeah, the weather is fantastic. So next, everyone's favourite topic, I guess. It's mine anyway. Food. So the food in Japan is freaking awesome. And you're literally spoilt for choice. There's so many different um, types of food here that they do so bloody well. Now my particular favourite is yakiniku. Now, yakiniku is actually Korean, so I think in in the States you, may, you guys maybe call it Korean barbecue but here it's called yakiniku and uh, yeah I really love that so you go into the restaurant you've got a little um, uh, a fire basically on your table in the middle of the table normally like a gas gas thing with a <coughs> with like a barbecue in it and you order the meats that you want and the meats are all you know properly prepared and sliced and seasoned and whatnot and you cook them yourself, dip them in some sauce or whatever, and yeah, it is yummy. So yakiniku is my favourite. Then the other things you got like Japanese izakayas. Izakaya, I think, literally translates to translates to Japanese bar. So that's just um, a place where you can spend, you know, like a couple of hours eating and drinking various sort of easy, easy to eat foods, like you know french fries and fried chicken, chicken wings, uh, meats on a stick like, like basically the Japanese versions of kebab, stuff like that. So it's kind of like an easy, easy eat kind of place. So I love going to those. Um, now when it comes to stuff like if you're a vegetarian or a vegan or something, I don't know, I think you might be screwed here because let's remember this is the country that still sells raw horse meat. So I don't think they cater particularly well to to veggies but I've got no idea because I'm not a veggie so do your own homework on that right so aside from food now I, as you guys probably know I gave up drinking last year um, so nightlife used to be a big draw for me a big thing but now not so much but but overall the nightlife here is freaking awesome depending on what kind of person you are there's pretty much something to cater for your particular kink if you're you know like an anime freak or whatever there's uh, bars that just have anime playing the whole time and they've got manga magazines for you to read and people dress up in cosplay and that maybe the staff are dressed up in cool like Sailor Moon uniforms or whatever 
<laughs> so if you're into that kind of weird stuff there's a place for you if you're a pervert like me there's plenty of places where you can go to hostess clubs and chat to sexy girls with their sort of boobs almost hanging out there's regular sports bars where you can go play a game of pool and watch a football game and there's basically everything for you and because the locations are kind of centralized you know there'll be like a drinking district kind of thing so in one night you can go to the sports bar you can go to the anime bar you can go to your friend's uh, japanese izakaya then you can go to a titty bar on the way home and it's all you know within within walking distance so if you like having fun at night then yeah this place has got it all trust me on that right so what else so we've done eating and drinking so let's go back on topic to bikes so as I said you can ride here 365 days a year where I live and the roads here are freaking amazing um, now as you'll probably have guys will probably have seen from some of my other videos where I was on my MT-07 um, within an hour's ride from my house there are at least 10 amazing roads that I can think of off the top of my head just like you got Suzuka Skyline, the Kurokake Pass, Orange Road, just to name a few and those are basically you know they're not paved roads they're not toll roads or anything special like tourist roads or driveways or anything like that they're just open and you can go and ride on them and for me when I have my days off uh, being Mondays and Tuesdays there's basically nobody there when I'm there that I guess they're only busy on weekends so that is great if you like riding your bikes in the mountains then Japan has got it all all you need to do really is look at a map of the country and see how many mountains there are and then obviously go figure there's going to be mountain roads so aside from the roads we've got tracks we got loads of tracks just in uh, my area there's 10 tracks probably maybe more that you can just rock up to any day of the week you can just wake up in the morning and think I feel like riding on a track today you can go there hey can I ride on the one o'clock session please sure $50 please pay your money and then you've got an hour's track time just like that so that's fantastic for bike lovers and car lovers so what else um, one thing that when I was younger and I first moved here wasn't really a, you know wasn't really a consideration why I didn't really care but now now that I've got a family the the safety and the cleanliness and all that is just amazing now when my mum first came here she was shocked and I probably would have been shocked but I think I got used to it by then but you'll see school kids like six-year-old school kids um, taking the train to school by themselves now I can't think of any country any other countries where that would be allowed more than more than be safe but yeah they safely do it you don't really hear of any you know incidents with kids being kidnapped or anything like that I'm sure it does happen but um, yeah it, it's fairly it's fairly worry free to let your kids say go to the park by themselves or take the train to school by themselves it's not like um like it would be in i'd say england like i would never even dream of letting my kids go to school by themselves in england but uh, yeah the safety and the cleanliness over here is just fantastic um <clears throat> right so on to nature next so like i just said japan is a very mountainous country and that means where there's mountain there's, there's nature and what we got is for people who like outdoor stuff i mean it doesn't japan doesn't really get publicized as this but you can do everything that you want if you're into mountain biking you can do that if you're into off-road bikes motocross you can do that if you're into skiing you can do that in the winter snowboarding if you're into scuba diving you can do that in the summer if you want to go snorkeling in the river you can do that if you just want to sit on the beach and get a suntan you can do that the outdoor life here is amazing the trouble is that most people don't have enough time off to enjoy it and it doesn't really get publicized as you know like a touristy thing to do in japan i don't think anyway skiing maybe but all the other stuff not so much maybe snorkeling in okinawa is something you hear of but there's more to japan than okinawa so yeah the nature here is fucking awesome and if you guys have got an opportunity to come here for like a vacation for two weeks or something i would 
without doubt so you got to do it because it is a fantastic country all right so aside from the nature what else has this country got to offer um, obviously the culture here is is totally different from what we're used to in the west so you will probably be surprised almost immediately you probably just get off the plane get out of the airport and you'll be just blown away by how different the culture is you know one thing that i remember i first noticed here is um, the service level is amazing here so when you walk into a convenience store or something all the staff will say which is like welcome to our shop they will all do it and at first you think you're like well what, what does that mean why are they talking to me but it's just like they're so I don't want to say subserving because that sounds a bit weird but it's kind of like that it's like when you're the customer you are God and so it makes things it makes things sort of nice because um, I, I remember I got reverse culture shot once when I'd been in Japan for ages and I went back to England and I was at Heathrow and the, t the passport lady was this I get well she was a Muslim anyway because she was wearing a, a turban or no not turban what do you call it hajib but uh, sort of I could see her face but you know what I mean she was wearing like a headdress anyway and she was chewing gum right well well she's doing her job as the passport controller and she, the way she talked to me was just like casual as fuck she was just like oh, where you been where you going and all this sort of stuff and I was like, holy shit, why isn't she bowing down to me and saying, here. welcome back to England, sir. I was like, totally got reverse culture shock. So, yeah, one of the things you'll notice here is the customer service level is just at, off the fucking scale. It's, it's great. Now, uh, when I first came here, I did feel like a bit of a twat, to be honest. I felt like I was like lording it over the people like, yes, that's right. I am the customer, so you better fucking do exactly what I tell you it feels like that first but you sort of get used to it and then you get to realize that actually it's a, a fairly good system um and uh, yeah that that goes where wherever you are really it's not just um uh not just in the convenience stores obviously you go to a gas station they'll it, it reminds me of back to the future you guys remember when he travels back to 1955 and he sees a gas station and all the people come running out and one of them washes the windscreen, one of them che checks the tyre presses, one of them pops the hood to check the oil. That, it, it's still like that here. <laughs> there are Self-service stations are getting more and more popular, but I can rock it up to a petrol station now and uh, I'll go, yeah, fill it up with high octane, please. I'll pay my card, they'll do all that. Then I could just say, to them, can you check my uh, tyre presses, please, as well? Can you? If it's not right, can you put two in the front and 1.9 in the back? And then, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> and like, the, it's it just it's just nice. The fact that people, I don't think it's fake either. But the fact that people give a shit about their jobs and they honestly try to do their best at their job, it just makes things nicer and it makes the country sort of work smoothly. Now, how much of it is just, you know, face, putting a face on of wanting to do, do uh, the best, I don't know, but generally speaking, they are good at their jobs, within reason. So that's one, another thing that I like about this country. So what have we gone through on this list? We've gone through the weather, uh, we've gone through roads, track, food, the Japanese culture, sightseeing. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but I think that's a pretty decent list to go with. So if you guys have got any comments or you want to ask me any questions, just stick it down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to reply to you guys. So I hope you liked my video, I hope it wasn't as uh, negative and depressing as what's it really like to live in Japan? It's fucking shit, don't do it, they'll make you into a slave. Like my last video was. <laughs> So sorry about that. But yeah guys, I'll see you in the next video. So, peace.